please rise for the presentation of the colors as the flags of the United States of America and the state of California are brought in by the honor guard from the Richard A. McGee Correctional Training Center. Please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Captain Nathan Justin of the California State Prison, Solano. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the Please be seated. And now, Deacon Bill Gakey, CDCR Chaplain from California State Prison, Sacramento, will lead the invocation.
Let us bow our heads and ask a blessing on our gathering. As the tender compassion of our Creator, God, allows this morning to dawn with new and lifelong blessings upon us, let us reflect this light that shines on all now as we hear of and honor acts of valor from those who chose courageously to come alongside others struck with darkness or afflicted by the shadows of death. May we see the deeper meaning of compassion so that as with the Good Samaritan parable of old, when the unexpected helper emerges to provide assistance of immeasurable good, we might all come to see the grace of unconditional love. We ask to be strengthened by accounts of these actions that acts such as these lead us all and give us courage when called in a similar manner. That as well, we echo the gratitude of lives that have been ever more changed for the better by those being honored here today. And so as we recall that blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, so too may the Lord bless us as we celebrate the measures of protection from those who showed up to better the lives of those around them, who noticed and responded to the needs of others, and so allowing this community to be all the more thankful for each other and for life everlasting. Amen. It is my privilege to introduce the Secretary of the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, Jeff Beard. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to welcome everybody here today, and I want to thank you for all for coming to this very important ceremony, it, a ceremony that's extremely important to our department. I want to begin by thanking the California Correction Supervisors Organization for their continued support by graciously hosting the CDCR Medal of Valor Award Ceremony for the past 11 years. Without the organization's contribution, we would not be able, be able to gather here today. This year has presented many challenges to the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, and I would like to thank all of our dedicated staff who work tirelessly every day to meet the goals of our agency to secure a safer California through correctional excellence. Every staff member plays an essential role in safeguarding our communities. Correctional officers, parole officers, treatment staff, and the critical support staff of CDCR are charged with assuring that one of the largest adult and youth offender departments in the nation runs securely, safely, and humanely under what are often extremely stressful and challenging conditions. Today we honor heroes from our staff who have been placed in situations that call for actions that are above and beyond the normal calls of duty. Today we also recognize dedicated CDCR employees who exemplify a commitment to selfless service day in and day out. We are recognizing more than 80 men and women in this 31st annual Medal of Valor Awards program. We honor courageous acts that include saving the lives of inmates and children, saving fellow officers from an inmate attack, saving the lives of motorists, and confronting an armed carjacker who had already killed two people. While facing danger or adversity, several of these men and women have demonstrated split-second decision-making, bravery, and integrity. Others have shown a level of teamwork needed to rise to the unexpected challenges that life can bring. In all cases, their actions were above and beyond the call of duty. Today's honorees, their noble acts and innovative ideas are an inspiration to all of us. I am privileged to lead this department 
and I'm proud of the employees that we're honoring today. Now please join me in congratulating the recipients of the 2015 Medal of Valor Awards. Our first awards are for the Employee Recognition Program. Each year, directors of our divisions recognize employees in their areas for outstanding work. Presenting our first Employee Recognitions Award is Dr. Diana Tosh, Undersecretary of Healthcare Services. Good morning. I feel very privileged to be able to hand out the awards this morning. Um, we know that there is wonderful work going on out there in the field and headquarters, and so we'll get started with some awards for a few headquarters folks. This award is for the Administrator of the Year, and we are lucky this year that we have two people deserving of this honor. They are Lauren E. Sheely and Denise M. Allen. Lauren is the Chief of Population Projections, and Denise is the Chief of Research of Evaluation, both from the Office of Research. In addition, they have been awarded the Distinguished Service Awards. Please come forward to receive your awards from Secretary Beard. <laughs> Ms. Allen and Ms. Sheely are crucial to producing CDCR population projections. This report provides critical information for estimating growth in CDCR's institutions and population, parole, pro, parolee populations. This document is used to make program and budget decisions. And this information is used not only by CDCR, but also by the legislature and the Department of Finance in, budget, in the budgetary process. CDCR recently implemented a new offender management system known as SOMS, which replaced the old system used by CDCR for more than 20 years. This change required the population pro projection process to be redesigned, a process that would take an estimated 18 to 24 months. Being unable to produce the, the population projections for this long would have had drastic impacts on CDCR programs and the budget. However, Ms. Allen and Ms. Sheely worked with CDCR staff and the University of Irvine to produce a new population projection model. The new model avoided the 18 to 24 month gap and has excellent accuracy rate, maintaining their accuracy rate of like, just being off by like 1%, if that, so great accuracy. So, and the model also provided additional capacities to CDCR's great benefit. So congratulations to Ms. Allen and Ms. Sheely. The next award is for the Healthcare Services Professional of the Year. This honor goes to Dr. Amy Ergel. Please come forward to receive your award. <laughs> Dr. Ergel is the statewide mental health program's foremost subject matter expert on patient care and clinical practice. She is personally responsible for developing policy for the program's most important initiatives. Her efforts have directly resulted in changing the way we provide mental health care and improve the conditions of confinement for our patient population. She oversees statewide suicide prevention and response efforts, which have resulted in lower frequencies of suicide since 2011. She led development of policy and training to reduce use of force incidents. Dr. Ergo leads a team of clinicians at headquarters, as well as overseeing administrative policy for the mental health clinicians in the field. Her efforts also include a psychologist internship program that provides potential recruits an in-depth introduction to a career in correctional health care and results in many clinicians staying on and seeking a career with CDCR. Dr. Ergel always represents the department's mental health program to our custody partners, court monitors, and peers professionally, enthusiastically, and with compassion for our patients. Congratulations, Dr. Amy Ergel. <laughs> our, 
Our next award is the Division of Ju Juvenile Justice Professional of the Year. This honor goes to Youth Correctional Counselor Deborah Brady, who I see that the seat is empty. So I'll still tell you all about Deborah Brady because she provides wonderful service to the department. She is also receiving the Distinguished Service Award. Counselor Brady embarked on her distinguished career in DJJ in 1987. She developed a deep affection for the conservation camp system after she transferred to the Pine Grove Youth Conference, Conference, Conservation Camp. I assume she's not here as she's probably working on the fire. As we all know, the Butte Fire is very close to the Pine Grove Camp. She has successfully prepared hundreds of youth to be firefighters, as well as participating in other programs for the benefit of CDCR, the youth, and the taxpayers of California. She has also proven adept at her overseeing duties as she is a hawk in finding cell phones and other contraband. She coordinates and supervises work involving youth in many nonprofit community organizations. These organizations include Operation Care, a group committed to assisting victims of sexual crimes, and ARC, an, emergency responsible, an, emergency, an agency is responsible for assisting developmentally disabled residents of Amador County. Councilor Brady has successfully and without incident supervised youth in near, nearly every public setting imaginable. Congratulations to Councilor Brady. Our next award is the Division of Rehabilitative Programs Professional of the Year. This honor is awarded, awarded to Matika Rawls, Associate Governmental Program Analyst. Please come forward to receive your award. <laughs> Ms. Rawls plays an integral role in DRP's mandate to provide effective programming leading to a reduction in recidivism. Previously, each institution staff was responsible for identifying, ordering, and distributing curricular materials and trade supplies for their specific career technical education or CTE program offerings. Now, Ms. Rawls manages the procurement for all 283 CTE classes and workshops statewide through a centralized standardized procurement process. Ms. Rawls single-handedly maintains the records and orders for each of the programs juggling supply lists. She has assisted with the planning and implementation of professional development for the field teachers. She models outstanding customer service for all staff. She is well recognized providing excellent structure and project management for the CTE team. She is a natural leader. Ms. Rawls supports of CTE helps provide a high quality educational opportunities for inmates that ultimately lead to learning a valuable trade, allowing parolees to earn a livable wage upon their transition back into society. Congratulations, Ms. Walls. Presenting our next Employee Recognition Awards is Kenneth Pogue, Undersecretary of Administrative and Offender Services. Thank you, it is very wonderful to be here today. Uh, I haven't been with CDCR for that long, but I have been continually impressed with everyone I've come into contact here, and I'm very proud to be a part of this organization. Um, our next award is Division of Parole Operations Professional of the Year. This honor is awarded to Denise Labard, Parole Administrator One. Please come forward and receive your award. Because of Ms. Labard's leadership, the policy unit has generated and completed over 100 significant assignments, which include policies, DOM revisions, directives, regulation changes, corrective action plans, research, and numerous detailed projects. Ms. Labar is an expert at managing many complex assignments at the same time. Due to the increased number of lifers being released, Ms. Labar successfully coordinated processes within BPH, DAI, Victim Services, Parolee Health Management Unit, and DAPO field staff to begin managing this new population, parole population for DAPO. Ms. Labard spearheaded DAPO's Proposition 47 responsibilities. This was a huge undertaking thrown at her with very little guidance on the expectations. 
but she chaired a work group to develop a supervision model for Proposition 47 cases that created an easy transition for the field. Ms. Labard worked closely and collaboratively with the Division of Rehabilitative Programs to develop concepts to ensure parolees are informed about the Affordable Care Act. Ms. Labard is also responsible for interpreting new laws, propositions, Senate bills and assembly bills, good luck with that, to determine the relevance and impact to DAPO. Congratulations, Ms. Labard. The next award is for Correctional Officer of the Year. The honoree is Correctional Officer Joanne Weiss of the California Correctional Center. Please come forward to receive your award. <laughs> officer Weiss gives of herself far beyond the normal duties of a correctional officer. She is an active member of the Susanville chapter of the Blue Star Moms, which supports deployed military and veterans. She also is a member of the Peer Support Program. Through a variety of events, she has raised funds for or helped a wide number of people in need. She has raised funds for children with cancer, building homes for victims of human trafficking, the Special Olympics, a Lassen High School student who had a once in a lifetime opportunity to go to Australia, building a home for a wounded war veteran, sending three World War II veterans to Washington to see the World War II Memorial, and saving music classes in local schools. She accomplished all this while maintaining an exemplary record as a correctional officer. She has a can-do attitude that is contagious and inspiring. Congratulations, Officer Vice. The next award is for Correctional Supervisor of the Year. The honoree is Correctional Lieutenant Matt DeForest, now assigned as a Northern Region Special Agent for OIA. Please come forward to receive your award. The qualities of good leadership are all found in CDCR career agent DeForest. Courage, decisiveness, accountability, team building, integrity, and poise. He has excelled on, on the front lines of ensuring safety and standards in some of the most sensitive and important duties a correctional officer must perform. For example, inmates in the High Desert State Prison Administrative Segregation Unit staged a mass action by covering their cell windows and engaging in disruptive behavior. He organized a two-day operation that accomplished about 60 cell extractions without a single injury to staff or inmates. In another case, he was instrumental in the operation to randomly search visitors and their vehicles as they entered the institution's parking lot. Numerous packages of narcotics and paraphernalia were intercepted. These are just two examples of a career filled with many accomplishments. Many times he improved efficiency of operations, resulting in significant cost savings to the California taxpayers. He also found time to be a leader in the community, serving with distinction as a reserve deputy for the Lassen County Sheriff's Department. He also helped raise funds for numerous charities, including the Special Olympics. Congratulations, Agent DeForest. Our final employee recognition award to go some, goes to somebody that I've had the, the pleasure and privilege of working with. Um, he's a true professional, and, and I'm proud to be working with him. Um, it, it, the position is for Executive of the Year, and the honoree is Vincent Cullen, Assistant Deputy Director of the Division of Adult Institution Operations. Please come forward and receive your award. <laughs> Mr. Cullen has, complied a has compiled a distinguished career at CDCR, successfully handling some of the toughest assignments. Many of his achievements have been out of the limelight, but vital to CDCR. Success, uh, carrying out some of his public service missions. Many of his achievements have been out of the limelight, sorry. He is or has been responsible for the classification services unit, program support unit, population management unit, case records unit, and statewide transportation. He was the assistant project manager for the establishment of the class action management unit. He has previously served as chief deputy warden and acting warden at San Quentin State Prison. He was previously assigned also as the Associate Warden at the California Medical Facility. 
He has previously served as correctional business manager, correctional plant manager, correctional plant supervisor, and budget analyst at the California Medical Facility. He expertly handled special assignments, including the custody project lead for the establishment of rehabilitative programming associated with AB 900, and as the chief of a newly established project management unit. Congratulations, Mr. Cullen. The Distinguished Service Medal is awarded for an employee's work conduct with the department for a period of months or years or involvement in a specific assignment of unusual benefit to the department. Presenting the first of Distinguished Service Medals is Jay Verbal, Associate Director, Female Defender Program and Services for the Division of Adult Institutions. Good morning. Our first medal award to, is to Correctional Sergeants Toop and Tomeo from Avenal State Prison. Sergeant uh, Toop has retired and could not be here today, so please, um, Sergeant Toop has uh, retired and could not be here today. Sergeant Tomeo, could you please step forward and receive your medal? <laughs> Healthcare Sergeants Toop and Tomeo collaborated with Sacramento County Sheriff's Department in the investigation and prosecution of a child molestation case. The Sheriff's Department investigation revealed an inmate was in possession of a cell phone and was soliciting female accomplices to transmit images of child molestation. Detectives contacted Sergeant Tomeo, who connected them with Sergeant Toop, who located the inmate while in the possession of the cell phone. Sergeant Toop delivered the phone and two detectives and testified in the inmate's subs subsequent trial, which resulted in the convictions of multiple counts of child molestation. Sergeants Toop and Tomeo demonstrated efficiency and professionalism in the collaboration of fellow law enforcement agencies. Without their efforts to obtain a valuable cooperation of evidence stored on the cell phone, the possession and prosecution may not have been a success. Congratulations for your service. Our next Distinguished Service Medal Award is to Robbie Geyser, Recreational Therapist at Mule Creek State Prison. Please come forward and accept your reward. award. Ms. Geyser is recognized for her exemplary work as a prior crisis response team member and current peer support team member. She has a history of serving CDCR in positions requiring good judgment and stress management. She has been a negotiation management team member. She has served as a crisis negotiator and trained at Folsom State Prison, California State Prison, Sacramento, and with the Mule Creek Crisis Response Team. She participated in numerous critical incidents, including a 2006 hostage situation at California State Prison, Sacramento, where she assisted with negotiations that led to the safe release of an officer. Ms. Geyser has been part of the peer support since 1997 and a member, a member and as a leader. She is selfless when it comes to her helping staff, being called upon of all hours to help coworkers in need. She is also an inmate leisure activity group sponsor and crisis counselor for Amador County Behavior Health Program. Congratulations for your service. Our next dis Distinguished Service Medal Award is to Juan Gajardo, excuse me, Gajardo, Treatment Team Supervisor at the OH Close Youth Correctional Facility. Please come forward and accept your award. <laughs> Through Mr. Gajardo's guidance of OH Close has continually raised its Integrated Behavior Team Model, or the IBTM compliance, moving the Division of Juvenile Justice closer to removing itself from an aspect of the feral lawsuit. Mr. Gajardo chairs the monthly IBT meetings at OH Close, ensuring all subcommittees are accomplishing their goals. He participates in the weekly administrative and operations meeting of all three DJJ facilities to review all committee work before it's sent to headquarters. He oversees the disciplinary division making system at OH Close and manages two living units where the IBTM groups and reinforcements are in place to reduce recidivism in a high risk population. He oversees the skill of the week program designated to teach youth on how to use cognitive behavior skills and program services day 
at the OH Close, which engages youth in positive structured activities. Congratulations for your sterling service. Our next Distinguished Service Medal Award goes to Michael Trotter, Case Specialist at the OH Cloth Youth Correctional Facility. Please come forward and accept your award. <laughs> Mr. Trotter is assigned to the Sexual Behavior Treatment Program at OH Close. Mr. Trotter leads the F Family Council at OH Close and works closely with education, custody, treatment, and mental health to ensure open communication between parents and the institution. By helping everybody work together, his efforts have been invaluable to youth and their families. Mr. Trotter's extra extraordinary work includes fundraising with staff and families to make it possible for indigent families to visit, translating visiting guidelines into Spanish and English to assist parents in understanding their visiting process, and the addition of healthy food alternatives and vending machines for both staff and youth. Overseeing the parents, or excuse me, the painting of murals by youth and staff in the visiting hall also for families will have a nice place to take their pictures. Congratulations for you and your sterling service. Presenting the next of our Distinguished Service Medals is Connie Gibson, Associate Director, General Population, Males for the Division of Adult Institutions. Good morning, everyone. Our next Distinguished Service Medal is awarded to Marty Giannini, Treatment Team Supervisor at the N.A. Chatterjee Youth Correctional Facility. Please come forward to accept your award. <laughs> Mr. Giannini ensured that both O.H. Close and N.A. Chatterjee were in compliance with departmental audits and met, for, met the federal lawsuit standards. He closely works with education, custody, treatment, medical, mental health, disabilities, and dental to make sure mandates are met. His work includes spot checks, self-audits, creating corrective action plans, follow-up reports, and documentation. Mr. Giannini is a 23-year CDCR employee who has mastered some of the most important and complex compliance issues facing the department. His tireless work has assisted OH Close and N.A. Chatterjee in making a successful transition out of many areas of the federal lawsuit and to maintain high standards going forward. Thank you for your commitment to the department. <laughs> Our next Distinguished Service Medal is awarded to Parole Agent 1, Thomas Foster of the Antelope Valley GPS Unit. Please come forward to receive your award. Agent Foster's ability to recognize a dangerous situation resulted in an arrest of a man who had sexually assaulted a woman. On June 5, 2013, Agent Foster conducted an unannounced home call and discovered the parolee and a woman inside. Agent Foster interviewed the woman and realized she was intoxicated. Due to the remote location and the woman's condition, Foster contacted his unit for assistance. When backup arrived, the team entered the home and observed the parolee sexually assaulting the victim. The parolee admitted to raping the woman who was taken to the hospital. The parolee was arrested and later convicted. Agent Foster was recognized as a 2014 CDCR Officer of the Year at the Antelope Valley Fair Association Law Appreciation Day. He also received accolades from the California State Assembly and Senate, local mayors, and chiefs of police. Congratulations for your sterling service. Our next Distinguished Service Medal is awarded to Imam Tariq Akil, who served as chaplain at the Correctional Training Facility and is now serving as the Community Resource Manager. Please come forward to receive your award. <laughs> Imam Akil has done an outstanding job for years in guiding inmates in the practice of their faith and representing CDCR to the community at large. Throughout a long career, Iman Akil has garnered many honors, including receiving the 2014 Faithful Servant Award at the Pre-Grammy Interfaith Awards, a 2000 invitation by President Bill Clinton to attend a call for action for faith groups of America at the White House, 
addressing the Conference of World Islamic Leaders in Jakarta, Indonesia in 2001, serving as a guest speaker at the Jerusalem Peace Symposium in 2003, being awarded a U.S. Congressional Congratulatory Letter for Outstanding Community Service in 2004, recognition as the Monterey County Peace Officers Association 2013 Employee of the Year. Congratulations and thank you for your service. The unit citation is for great courage displayed by a departmental unit in the course of conducting an operation in the face of immediate life-threatening circumstances. Our unit citation honorees are from the California State Prison, Sacramento. As I call your name, please come forward and receive your unit citation from Secretary Beard. Correctional Lieutenant Dean Shanklin, Correctional Sergeants Daniel, Light Daniel Lightfield and Kenneth Blessing, Correctional Officers Christopher Jake Drake, Desmond Brown, Joe DeFazio, Joseph Johnson, James Lewis, Kenneth Hill, Mark Churry, Matthew Orpeza, Paul Bentoncourt, and Tyrone Johnson. In December of last year, this team was confronted with a fire in a cell. The fire was set by an inmate who had a history of starting fires as employed to assault staff trying to rescue him during cell extractions. He had previously be been found to possess inmate manufactured weapons. With the knowledge of this potential danger, this team of officers sprang to action. Attempts failed to extinguish a blaze using fire suppressant introduced under the door and through the food board. Using their training, some of the officers donned protective gear while other officers evacuated inmates from nearby cells. The extraction team entered the cell, handcuffed the inmate, and removed, and removed the inmate, very likely saving his life. There were no staff injuries and no inmate injuries, as this complex action had to be executed. Congratulations on a job well done. The Bronze Star Medal is the department's award for saving a life without placing oneself in peril. The employees shall have used proper training and tactics in a professional manner to save or clearly contribute to saving the life of another. Presenting the first set of awards will be Kathleen Allison, Deputy Director, Facility Support for the Division of Adult Institutions. Thank you, Sam. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this wonderful event. It's my honor to present the first awards for the Bronze Star. The first award this morning will go to Correctional Officer Jose Perez of the California Men's Colony. Officer Perez, please come forward to accept your award. <laughs> Officer Perez was enjoying his day off last June in downtown Atascadero when he came across an 85-year-old man who was going into cardiac arrest. Officer Perez quickly retrieved his CPR microshield barrier from his vehicle and began CPR. Officer Perez was joined by an off-duty San Luis Obispo County Sergeant and together they performed two-person CPR until they were relieved by responding police officers. In a letter to California Men's Colony from the Atascadero Police Department, as a result of Officer Perez performing early and correct CPR on the victim, he survived. Prior to the victim being transported by ambulance to the hospital, he was awake and talking. An Atascadero Fire Department paramedic who responded to the incident said the victim survived because the quick delivery of CPR by Officer Perez and others and the use of a defibrillator by um, paramedics. Congratulations on your award. The next bronze star goes to a group of officers from Avenal State Prison. 
And this is, gives me great pleasure considering I started Avenal in 1987, so go Avenal. Um, as your name is called, please come forward and receive your award from Secretary Baird. Correctional Sergeant Cristobal Gonzalez, Jr. Correctional Officers Eric Martinez, Jaime Garcia, Olga Martinez, and Sergio Gonzalez. Last August, a staff supervised a day room. Inmates were spotted gathering around a bunk. An inmate was found unresponsive on his bunk. The inmate was on his back, sweating profusely with his eyes rolled back to his head. The inmate did not respond to questioning. No signs of breathing were detected. The correctional officers followed their training, quickly began to revive the inmate. CPR was immediately started in the form of chest compressions, a manual, a resuscitator was brought and deployed. The inmate was moved to the floor so CPR could be continued more effectively. As more staff arrived, the efforts continued to save the inmate. An automatic defibrillator was deployed. No shock was advised. Medical staff arrived and administered more treatment to the inmate who finally began to breathe and was transported to an outside hospital. A supervising nurse reported to the watch commander, the unit staff in unit 640 and the initial responders saved this guy's life. With the inmates returned from the hospital, he thanked the officers for saving his life. Congratulations, officers, on your reward. <laughs> Our next Bronze Stars Awards goes to three correctional officers from Valley State Prison. Correctional officers Carlos Chavez, excuse me, Veronica Rindon, and Maria Beltran, please come forward to receive your awards. Late September, a correctional officer eating his lunch in the gymnasium on the main yard suddenly began to gra gasping for air. The three correctional officers moved to the victim, asking if he needed aid. The victim began to cough and attempt to drink, but could not. Officer Chavez and the others used proper airway exchange from the, could, sorry, I'm sorry, saw that there was no proper airway exchange from the victim's mouth or nose. The victim could not talk and attempted to unzip his jumpsuit and vest. Acting as a team, the officers removed the, the victim's stab-resistant vest and duty belt. They called for a medical response team to the gym. Officer Chavez performed the Heimlich maneuver on the victim repeatedly until the object of his airway was expelled. The victim began to breathe again. The victim was evaluated by medical staff and he chose to stay on duty, a choice made possible by these officers. Thank you for saving the life of a fellow officer. Congratulations. Our next Bronze Star Award recipient is Correctional Officer and K-9 Handler Ernest Trujillo at, from Calpatria State Prison. Officer Trujillo, please come forward to receive your award. Okay, it appears that Officer Trujillo is not here, so let me please read you his, um, what he did. During his cell search last August, Officer Trujillo, canine partner, Tucker, everyone knows we have these great canines out there, um, crawled under a bunk and pulled out a towel, revealing a small lip balm cap. When Officer Trujillo pulled Tucker out from under the bunk, he noticed Tucker's mannerisms had changed, indicating that he may have ingested drugs. Officer Trujillo immediately induced Tucker to vomit before rushing the canine to the nearest veterinarian clinic. While on the way to the veterinarian clinic, Officer Trujillo was notified that the substance in the cap that Tucker sniffed out was in fact um, positive for heroin. At this point, Officer Trujillo knew time was precious. The veterinarian injected Tucker with an antidote for opium poisoning. 
Thanks to the de detailed attention and swift action of Officer Trujillo, Tucker was treated and released the same day and returned to duty. Congratulations. The next Bronze Star Medals will, present, will be presented by Guillermo Vieira Rosa, Regional Parole Administrator for the Division of Adult Parole Operations. Good morning. It's my distinct pleasure to present the next Bronze Star Medals to Sergeant Dugri and Officer Arana with the San Quentin State Prison. Please come forward and receive your medals. Last April, Sergeant Dugary and Officer Arana responded to a report of an unresponsive inmate in the lower yard. Officer Arana found the inmate did not have a pulse. He immediately began CPR on the victim. Sergeant Dugary requested medical help. He retrieved a manual resuscitator and worked in coordination with Officer Arana, who was providing chest compressions. Medical staff arrived and were able to restore a pulse to the victim. The victim was transported by ambulance to a local hospital. The victim did survive. When the victim returned to San Quentin, he expressed his appreciation to Sergeant Dugary and Officer Arana for saving his life and for their professionalism. Thank you, Sergeant Dugary and Officer Arana. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Correctional Officer John Atkins of the California Correctional Center. Officer Atkins could not be here due to a previous commitment. Nonetheless, last February, Officer Atkins was in the unit office when he observed another officer eating. The officer stood up and attempted to make his way to the door in a manner that made Officer Atkins suspect something was wrong. Officer Atkins stopped the officer, who was holding his hand to his throat, indicating he couldn't breathe. The victim turned blue in the face as he struggled to breathe. Officer Atkins quickly positioned himself to perform the Heimlich maneuver. After several attempts, a piece of food was forced from the victim's throat, and the victim began breathing again. Officer Atkins' sharp observation and quick attention saved the life of a fellow officer. Thank you, Officer Atkins. Next, Bronze Star is awarded to Correctional Officers John Fernetti and Chad Painter of the Dual Vocational Institution. Please come forward and receive your medal. <laughs> These two DVI Correctional Officers are credited with saving a man's life after he suffered a major heart attack and ran his car off the road here in Elk Grove. Last October, Correctional Officers John Fernetti and Chad Painter were on their way to work when they spotted a vehicle that had run off the Interstate 5. In the car, they found a man slumped over and semi-conscious. They broke a window and removed the driver, who by now was not breathing. The men took turns performing CPR. As one officer tired, the other would take over. Even after paramedics arrived, the officers were asked to continue CPR until a defibrillator could be readied. The man was transported to a hospital and survived. The victim's family was very grateful. His stepdaughter said, we're so grateful God put them on the freeway at that moment. Thank you, Correctional Officers Fernetti and Painter. <laughs> Next Bronze Star is awarded to Correctional Sergeant Owen Spencer of Pelican Bay State Prison. Please come forward and receive your medal. Last December, Sergeant Spencer was at his home when his wife, when the wife of a correctional sergeant who lived next door summoned him. Her husband was feeling ill and she was preparing to drive him to the hospital when he collapsed in the driveway. Sergeant Spencer determined the victor did not have a pulse and was not breathing. Sergeant Spencer immediately began CPR, something he was well trained in from both his CDCR experience and his membership in the Del Norte County Volunteer Fire Department. Sergeant Spencer maintained CPR until medical responders arrived.
Through his quick and professional reaction, Sergeant Spencer saved the life of a fellow officer. Thank you, Sergeant Spencer. The next Bronze Star Medals will be presented by Anthony Lucero, Deputy Director of the Division of Juvenile Justice. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here and uh, participate in this ceremony honoring those uh, participants here. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Correctional Officer Walter Moore of California Medical Facility. Please come forward and receive your medal. Last September, Officer Moore and his family were attending a Disney music festival at Sleep Train Arena. During the performance, a woman in front of Officer Moore yelled that her four-year-old son was having a seizure. With Officer Moore's help, she carried her son to the top of the stairs leading out of the arena. Officer Moore saw the seizures had stopped and the little boy was no longer breathing. Officer Moore took the child and began CPR and revived the victim. However, when the CPR was stopped, the child had another seizure and turned blue again from lack of oxygen. Officer Moore restarted the CPR, kept it up until medical help arrived. The child survived, thanks to the fast and professional action of Officer Moore. Thank you, Officer Moore. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Derek Johnson, a senior estimator of building construction and project man manager in the Facility Planning, Construction, and Management Division. Please come forward and receive your medal. In July, Mr. Johnson was playing tennis with a friend, a correctional captain. While taking a break, Mr. Johnson's friend collapsed. Mr. Johnson caught the victim and eased him to the ground. Thinking his friend was having convulsions, Mr. Johnson turned him on his side. The victim quit breathing, turned purple, and was foaming at the mouth. Mr. Johnson turned the victim on his back, called 911, and began CPR. He continued to provide CPR until help arrived. The paramedics used a defibrillator, and the victim began breathing again. He was transported to a hospital and survived. Mr. Johnson's fast and professional actions saved the life of his friend and a fellow coworker. Good job, Mr. Johnson. Our next Bronze Stars are awarded to registered nurses, Zachary Eaton and Jesse Winker of the California Correctional Center. Nurse Winkers, could not be here today due to a prior engagement. Nurse Eaton, please come forward and receive your medal. In July last year, registered nurses Eaton and Winker were called to treat a correctional lieutenant who had collapsed. Fellow officers had noticed the victim's breathing was intermittent and his vital signs were quick, quickly declining. Finding the victim did not have a pulse, Nurse Eaton began CPR. Nurse Winker administered an automatic external defibrillator. The defibrillator recommended a shock, which Nurse Winker initiated. Nurse Eaton continued CPR until more medical help arrived and the victim was moved to a hospital. The, the victim survived due to the fast and professional actions of Nurse Winker and Nurse Eaton. Without their actions, we, would, we uh, avoided a tragedy due to their actions. Thank you, Nurse Eaton and Winker. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Correctional Officer Todd Gillis of the Substance Abuse Treatment Facility. Officer Gillis could not be here today due to a prior engagement. Last September, Officer Gillis was attending an off-duty swimming party with his family when he saw a young girl struggle and submerge. He immediately dived into and pulled her back to the surface and carried her out of the pool. 
She was about three years old and struggling to catch her breath. The parents thanked Officer Gillis. About 10 minutes later, while talking to the young lifeguard about his lack of alertness, Officer Gillis saw another child drop beneath the surface of the water. He jumped into the pool and lifted the second child out of the water. Officer Gillis's awareness of his surroundings and his bravery prevented the possible drowning of two children. He also saved two families from tragedy that would have affected them for the rest of their lives. Thank you, Officer Gillis. The next Bronze Star Medals will be presented by Deborah Heisey, Director of the Division of Facility Planning, Construction, and Management. Good morning. I just wanted to say, hearing these amazing stories here today, uh, it just reminds me how incredible our employees are, and not just in their professional lives, but in their personal lives. And it's just one of the many reasons I feel very proud to be part of the CDCR family, and I'm very humbled to present the next series of awards. Our next Bronze Stars are awarded to a correctional sergeant, a correctional officer, and two registered nurses at the Correctional Training Facility. They are Correctional Sergeant Humberto Vera and Correctional Officer Daniel Bjorn, Registered Nurses Martha Jimenez and Dee Seta. Martha Jimenez could not be present today due to previous engagements. Please come forward and receive your medals. Last June, an inmate collapsed on the basketball court. Nurses Jimenez and Seta were summoned. Nurse Seta determined the victim had no pulse and requested custody assistance in performing CPR. Officer Bjorn immediately began CPR on the victim. Meanwhile, Nurse Jimenez operated a manual resuscitator to pump air into the victim's lung. Nurse Seta deployed an automatic external defibrillator. Three times the defibrillator recommended shocks, which Nurse Seta administered. During this time, Sergeant Vera relieved Officer Bjorn in administering chest compressions. Just before the ambulance arrived, the victim regained a heartbeat and began breathing. Due to the fast and professional actions of these four employees, a life was saved. Congratulations to Correctional Sergeant Humberto Vera, Correctional Officer Daniel Bjorn, and Nurses Martha Jimenez and Dee Seta. Our next Bronze Stars are awarded to two people from the Sierra Conservation Center. They are Chief Deputy Warden Joel Martinez and Case Records Technician Leon Mize. Please come forward and receive your medals. Last March, Mr. Mize found a correctional officer unresponsive and gasping for air in a locked restroom. The officer did not respond to Mr. Mize's questions if the officer was okay. Mr. Mize sought help and found Chief Deputy Warden Joel Martinez. After calling for medical help, they both re-entered the restroom. Mr. Mize climbed over the wall and unlocked the door. Warden Martin Chief Deputy Warden Martinez and Mr. Mize moved the officer to the floor. The officer was unconscious and his skin was a bluish color. Ward Chief Deputy Warden cleared the officer's airway and the officer began to recover. Medical staff transported the officer to a hospital. The officer has made a full recovery. Due to the fast and professional actions of Chief Chief Deputy Warden Martinez and Mr. Mice, an officer's life was saved. Congratulations to Joel Martinez and Leon Wise. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Correctional Officer Thomas Morales of the California Training Facility. Officer Morales is unable to attend because of a prior commitment. Accepting the award for him is his warden, Marion Spearman. Please come forward and accept the award on behalf of Officer Morales. Last February, Officer Morales was driving on a bridge over State Highway 101 in Salinas when he saw a woman standing on the outer ledge of the bridge. He stopped and walked toward the woman. Her legs were wobbly and knees were shaking. As he approached, the woman put one leg over the bridge railing. As she started to put her other leg over the railing, Officer Morales grabbed her and pulled her to safety. Speaking to the crying woman in Spanish, he learned that she was on her cell phone when she wrecked her car. She did not have a driver's license and decided the only way out was to end her life. 
Officer Morales told police officers after they arrived that the woman needed mental health intervention. They took the woman to a place where she could get assistance. Officer Morales' compassion and professional actions saved her life. Please join me in thanking Officer Morales. Our next Bronze Stars are awarded to four people from the California State Prison at Solano. They are Correctional Sergeant Lorenzo Abella, Correctional Officer Sergio Martinez and Shanil Prasad, Registered Nurse Michelle Marin. Please come forward and receive your medals. Last July, officers Martinez and Prasad were called to a dorm where they found an inmate who had stopped breathing and had no pulse. Sergeant Abella arrived a short time later. The three provided life-saving care for the inmate, mainly by performing CPR. Nurse Marin used an automatic external defibrillator on the inmate. Twice the defibrillator recommended shock, which Nurse Marin delivered. The continued treatment caused the inmate to start breathing again. Due to the fast and professional actions of Sergeant Abella, officers Martinez and Prasad, and Nurse Marin, a life was saved. Congratulations to Correctional Sergeant Lorenzo Abella, Correctional Officers Sergio Martinez and Shanil Prasad, and Registered Nurse Michelle Marin. Thank you. The next Bronze Star Medals will be presented by Aileen Shimazu, Director of the Division of Administrative Services. Good morning. It's such an honor to be here to be able to uh, present the next Bronze Star Medals. Our next Bronze Stars um, are awarded to Correctional Officers George Limon and Aristel Punzal of Sentinel State Prison. Officer Punzal is not able to hear, be here today due to a prior commitment. Officer Limon, please come forward and receive your medal. <laughs> Last September, Officer Limon observed an unresponsive inmate. Examining the inmate, he found that the victim was not breathing and had no pulse. He requested help from his partner, Officer Punzal, Together, they carried the victim out of his cell. The inmate's face had turned a dark purple and he had no pulse. The officers administered CPR to the inmate until he began breathing again. Due to the fast and professional actions of Officer Lamont and Consal, a life was saved. Congratulations. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Youth Correctional Officer Gustavo Cambaos of the N.A. Chudurgian Youth Correctional Facility. Please come forward and receive your medal. <laughs> Last June, Officer Cambaos was driving with his wife when he witnessed a hit and run involving two vehicles. One of the vehicles was knocked off the road and onto its side. After asking his wife to call 911, Officer Camparos went to the vehicle where he had found a woman and her two children trapped. Officer Camparos freed the victims and led them to safety. Due to the fast and professional actions of Officer Camparos, a mother and their two children were com comforted during a very stressful situation. The mother thanked Officer Camparos for rescuing her and her children. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next Bronze Star is awarded to uh, Youth Correctional Officer Sue Perales of N.A. Chidurgian Youth Correctional Facility. Please come forward and uh, receive your medal. <laughs> Last November, Officer Perales was driving on Highway 99 in, in Merced in the evening when she observed a traffic backup caused by a vehicle stopped in the middle lane. The vehicle had been involved in an accident. She exited her vehicle and went to, uh, to the crash scene. The driver of the wrecked vehicle and the passenger were injured. Flames started coming from under the hood. With no thought to her own safety, Officer Perales helped the victims, of her car, victims to her car to await medical responders. Meanwhile, the wrecked vehicle became engulfed in flames. Due to the fast and professional actions of Officer Perales, two lives may have been saved. Congratulations.
Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Parole Agent Jose Montiel of Northern Region Redwood City Parole Unit. Please come forward and receive your medal. Last November, on two occasions, Agent Montiel chased and subdued suspects. In the first case, while off duty, Agent Montiel saw a suspect escape from Daly City Police Department officer. Agent Montiel, who had to run across a major road, caught and subdued the suspect, a convicted felon with a history of resisting arrest. In the second case, Agent Montiel was assisting the San Mateo County Probation Department with the arrest of a high-risk probationer. The suspect broke away from the officer, attempting to handcuff him. Agent Montiel pursued the suspect and, after a short foot race, caught and subdued him. Due to the fast and professional actions of Agent Montiel, escaped attempts by two suspects were stopped. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next awards are the Silver Star Medals. The Silver Star is the department's third highest awards for acts of bravery under extraordinary or unusual circumstances. The employee shall display courage in the face of potential peril while saving or attempting to save the life of another person or distinguish him or herself by performing in stressful situations with exceptional tactics or judgment. Millicent Tidwell, Director of the Division of Rehabilitative Programs, will present the first of Silver Star Awards. Thank you and good morning. I want to echo the sentiments expressed by my colleagues here about what a privilege and honor it is to be here today and present some of the first Silver Star Awards. So let's get started. The first Silver Star Awards uh, are awarded to two Division of Parole Operation Agents from the Parolee Apprehension Team in San Diego. Unfortunately, one of the agents, Ben Sumera, is unable to be here due to a prior commitment. Parole Agent 2, Jason Bradshaw, please come forward and receive your medal. <laughs> agents Sumera and Bradshaw teamed with the three U.S. Marshals to arrest a parolee who was a murder suspect. The parole agent spotted the suspect getting into a vehicle and the suspect ignored orders to get out of the vehicle and tried to drive away. Agent Bradshaw deployed a taser, but this action didn't stop the parolee. The parolee pinned a U.S. Marshal between two vehicles, injuring the U.S. Marshal. Fearing for their safety, agents Bradshaw and Somera then fired on the parolee, wounding him and forcing him to stop his vehicle. Agents Somera and Bradshaw secured the parolee and administered first aid until par paramedics arrived. Agent Bradshaw suffered a hand injury and a loaded handgun was later found in the parolee's vehicle. Thank you for your bravery. <clears throat> the next Silver Star is awarded to Correctional Officer James Patterson of California Rehabilitation Center. Officer Patterson, please come forward to receive your medal. Last January, Officer Patterson stopped at a convenience store in Redlands, California on his way home from CRC. He saw two men outside of the store yelling racial slurs and threats at a store employee who were standing in front of the store. One of the men grabbed a tire iron and threatened to hit the employee. Redlands police arrived and at gunpoint ordered the man with a tire iron to get on the ground, which he did. But the other man attacked a second Redlands police officer. With no thought to his personal safety, Officer Patterson removed his cover shirt and ran to the aid of the officer under attack. The suspect continued to resist even when a second police officer arrived to help. Finally, the three officers were able to subdue the suspect. Officer Patterson was kicked and struck multiple times but escaped serious injury, thankfully. Officer Patterson's courage and willingness to assist fellow law enforcement officers was in the best tradition of CDCR and exemplified the commitment to protect the citizens of this great state of California. Thank you. The next Silver Star Award is awarded to Captain Richard Smith and Lieutenant Thelma Wooldridge of Ironwood State Prison. 
please come forward to receive your medals. Last October, on the way home from work, Captain Smith and Lieutenant Woldridge came upon a single vehicle crash on Interstate 10. The vehicle had rolled over several times. Smoke was coming from the vehicle. Without thought of their own safety, Captain Smith and Lieutenant Woldridge rushed to the vehicle. They were able to get the driver out of the vehicle and pull him to safety. Seconds later, the vehicle caught fire. A photo taken by another person who had stopped showed flames engulfing the vehicle. The driver was disoriented and shaken up, but only suffered minor injuries thanks to the bravery of Captain Smith and Lieutenant Woldridge. A life was saved. The next Silver Star is awarded to Correctional Officer Antonio Viduetta of El Salinas Valley State Prison. Please come forward to receive your medal. Last December, four inmates began attacking two other inmates with inmate-manufactured weapons. Officer Viduetta joined a skirmish line and was part of a coordinated effort by correctional officers that stopped that fighting. The fight left two inmates with life-threatening injuries. Officer Viduetta observed one inmate was bleeding profusely from stab wounds. Acting on his own volition, he applied direct pressure on the wounds. Under stressful and dangerous circumstances, Officer Viduetta stopped the bleeding. Medical help arrived and took over treatment at that point. An LVN later stated that by acting immediately to stop the bleeding, Officer Viduetta saved the inmate's life. Thank you for your service. The last of the Silver Star and the Gold Star Medals will be presented by Ralph Diaz, Deputy Director of Facilities Operations for the Division of Adult Institutions. Thank you, Sam. It's my pleasure to continue with the ceremony here and in the next presentations in a line of work that at times is just with a lot of bad news and negativity. Today is a day of positive news and a show of heroism by our staff here and great work. So just want to thank you on my behalf. The next Silver Star is awarded to Correctional Officer Alex Pizarro of the California State Prison, Sacramento. Officer Pizarro, please come and set your medal. <laughs> Last January, Officer Pizarro was conducting searches of inmates before they entered the exercise yard. One inmate said he had forgotten something in his cell and then tried to talk his way out of a secondary search before he went to the yard. When, Officer, when, Officer Pizarro, when the inmate refused, Officer Pizarro, the inmate ran back into the cell where another officer was standing in the doorway and two inmates were in the cell. The inmate ran into the cell, pushing the officer into the cell as the alarm sounded and the cell door began to close. Officer Pizarro blocked the door from closing and pulled the officer out of the cell. After subduing the three inmates, an inmate manufactured weapon was found in the cell. Officer Pizarro's fast action and quick thinking saved a fellow officer from being trapped in a cell with three inmates armed with a weapon. Congratulations and thank you. <laughs> the next Silver Star is awarded to Correctional Officer Ricardo Luna of Sentinella State Prison. Officer Luna, come and accept your medal. Last October, at 23.30 hours, Officer Luna was driving home on Highway 86 when he saw a compact car hit broadside by a larger vehicle. The impact sent the smaller car into a violent spin, ejecting a passenger. Ignoring his own safety, on a dark night, Officer Luna stopped and ran, into the eject ran towards the ejected passenger and found a young child who was not breathing. Officer Luna immediately began CPR on the child. Within a few minutes, the child began to breathe. Medical responders arrived and airlifted the child to San Diego along with his child's mother who was trapped in the vehicle. Both survived thanks to the brave actions of Officer Luna. Thank you, Officer Luna. We're gonna to transition to our Gold Star recipients. 
The Gold Star Medal is a medal the department has selected the highest award for heroic deeds under extraordinary circumstances. This award is for an employee who displays courage in the face of immediate peril in acting to save the life of another person. The following recipients, after I read your name, come and receive your medal from Secretary Beard. Our first Gold Star is awarded to Correctional Officer Dominic Reed of North Kern State Prison. Come and accept your award. Last December, at 0400 hours on Interstate 5, Officer Reed was returning to the prison from a transport when he came upon the scene of a traffic collision. The crash left an occupied vehicle in the middle of the freeway. Officer Reed believed the occupants were in immediate danger because of the oncoming traffic. Officer Reed and another person ran through freeway traffic to the stalled vehicle. Officer Reed carried one passenger to safety on the side of the freeway. Officer Reed and another person made several trips through oncoming traffic to move all victims to safety. After the California Highway Patrol and medical responders arrived, Officer Reed returned in a state vehicle and completed his shift. Officer Reed's bravery and unselfish actions may have saved multiple victims. Thank you, Officer Reed. Our next gold star is awarded to Correctional Officer Benjamin Ledesma of North Kern State Prison. Officer Ledesma, come and accept your medal. <laughs> Last August, Officer Ledesma's partner was conducting a cell search. The inmate in the cell was ordered to step outside. Without provocation or warning, the inmate ran out of the cell and began stabbing the officer with an inmate manufactured weapon. Officer Ledesma engaged the inmate and used physical force to subdue, subdue the attacker. The officer's partners arrived and assisted in restraining the inmate. Officer Ledesma and the other officers sustained multiple stab wounds as a result. As a result. Officer Ledesma's bravery and quick action saved the life of his partner. Congratulations, Officer Ledesma. The Medal of Valor is the department's highest award, earned by employees distinguishing themselves by conspicuous bravery or heroism above and beyond the normal demands of correctional services. Kelly Harrington, Director of the Division of Adult Institutions, will present these awards. So before I get to the awards, <clears throat> I want to give a round of applause for Sam. He always does such a great job. <laughs> and so I get to give these awards out. It's an honor and a privilege. Uh, and, and it's interesting sitting up here seeing the three individuals because they're up there fidgeting and because this is out of their, their way. Uh, what, what they accomplished out there is beyond belief to most of us, and they're, they're not used to the limelight. Uh, in fact, uh, Sergeant Diaz, we almost had to pull up here. Uh, it took us a while to convince him, so I'm glad you're all here, and uh, it's such an honor and privilege to give these away. <clears throat> so our first Medal of Valors are awarded to Sean Copeland and Richard Glassman, who are youth correctional counselors at the Ventura Youth Correctional Facility. Please come forward to receive your medals. Last March, Counselor Glassman entered the day room to provide a youth access to make a phone call to his mother. He had just locked the youth in the office with a phone when he was struck from behind and from the side. The attackers demanded Counselor Glassman's keys <clears throat> so they could attack another youth and to possibly escape. Counselor Glassman replied, and I do quote, you'll have to kill me because you aren't getting them, end quote. Other wards joined the attack on Counselor Glassman. He fell backward, hitting his head on a table. He was kicked in the head and the body, but still refused to relinquish his keys. Counselor Copeland entered the room and without thought for his own safety, immediately went to Counselor Glassman's aid. The wards turned to attacking Counselor Copeland. By directing the attack to him, he may have saved Counselor Glassman from being killed. 
Security personnel arrived and subdued the assailants. Counselor Glassman and Copeland acted in the highest CDCR traditions of bravery and unselfish service. Thank you, gentlemen. Our next Medal of Valor is awarded to Correctional Sergeant Benny Diaz of Pleasant Valley State Prison. Please come forward to receive your medal. Last January, while off duty, Sergeant Diaz shot a gunman who was randomly shooting motorists. Fresno Police Chief Jerry Dyer held Sergeant Diaz as a he hero. While waiting at a stoplight, Sergeant Diaz saw a gunman walking up to vehicles and shooting motorists stranded in their vehicles. Sergeant Diaz, a former Marine, left his vehicle and headed towards the shooter. The sergeant's wife tried to stop him. He told his wife, babe, I've got to go. Duty calls, said Fresno Police Detective John Barberos. A witness told the Fresno Bee that he watched the CDCR sergeant and another armed civilian approach Lewis. It was scary, the witness said. Thank God for those two guys. He would have, ha he would have killed more people. If it wasn't for CDCR Sergeant Diaz, he might have gone after more cars, the witness said. Sergeant Diaz shot gang member Joshua Lewis, 21 of Fresno, four times as Lewis embarked on shooting and carjacking attacks. The gunman killed two people before Sergeant Diaz intervened. The wounded gunman fled in a stolen SUV, which he crashed a short time later and died of his wounds. <clears throat> there is no doubt that more people would have been killed if not for the CDCR Sergeant Diaz, Fresno Police Chief Dyer said. Sergeant Diaz acted in the highest CDCR traditions of bravery and unselfish service, and the world is a safer place. Thank you, Sergeant Diaz. This concludes our ceremony. We thank you all for coming. Thank you.